All right, I guess we can jump into it. And then if people are going to um, are going to jump on late, then, then that's fine. So I got it recording and we'll we'll push the email out, uh, the recording out after this. Um, but I wanted to I think most of us here are in the restoration field. Uh, Robert has a company up in Arrowhead. Um, let's see, we've got Tommy with PW, Sabrina, Sandra, uh, Travis is with Vert too, right? Yep. Travis just, Ford. Nice to meet All you. Right. Yeah, your shirt says you are. So right. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about, uh, and, and this can be more of a group effort, I think, which will be good, um, is just kind of COVID-19, um, little protection measures that they can put in place to protect their staff as the apartment complexes are still operational. Um, and kind of what we had in, in, in mind is talking about, you know, that right now everything's turned upside down because of COVID-19 and because of fear. Now we have uh, this whole uh, scare tactic marketing, right? With outrageous claims and false claims to, to try to profit huge. Did Scott freeze? Yeah, you're frozen. Or clearance testing, best is testing. Yeah, you're, I'm gonna chat. What did consider, was my audio kicking out? Yes. Yeah, it's stupid. It out. Okay. So I'm not sure where you guys uh, heard or didn't hear there. Start over. <laughs> Start over. It was that bad. <laughs> it was. It was. I think the last thing I heard was their tactics. Current environment. Everyone's oh. trying to rob somebody. All right, and then I said a bunch of really good things about all of you, so I, I don't need to <laughs> all of that. So yeah, again, essentially what we're seeing right now, at least what we're seeing, is uh, is people using scare tactics to try to secure jobs and, and just make high profits on on jobs that really they don't need to be involved in. So we've had a couple uh, management companies reach out to us for second opinions uh, on if they need to have preventative measures put in place for uh, killing COVID-19 viruses because some of the people are claiming that they're gonna come in and, and apply these disinfectants that are gonna kill COVID-19 and then prevent it from coming back for days on end. So kind of crazy things that we're seeing. Um, the, the most important thing that we push is they need cleaning on a regular basis, right? And I think we've, we've talked about that on a few calls. And then we can talk about what measures or testing measures can be uh, put in place uh, for them through like somebody like Bert to do clearance testing. We want to get into asbestos testing because that's still a very uh, touchy subject in a, in a gray area for a lot of managers. They don't understand the testing that they need when they're doing demo, they don't understand the importance of clearance testing uh, by a third party. So like one of our success stories was a year ago, we were doing a mold remediation for a guy that had a tenant in his property. And we, on any mold job, we require clearance testing by a third party. Otherwise we will not tackle that job at all. So he wanted to try to get out of that in the middle of the project and we stayed firm and we had some hard conversations with him uh, and he actually went through, he got the third party clearance testing and a year later he had an issue with the tenant and evicted the tenant and then got, a, um, then got sued and the tenant was saying that they were subjected to mold from the water damage to the end part of their lease and they were trying to get all this money back. So he reached out to us, we sent him our full report and he actually called me on Monday and he said, you're a very smart guy and I apologize for what I put you through a year ago. My attorney said, you're the only reason why I'm not paying out money on this because he actually had third party clearance that showed that everything was safe uh, prior to containments coming down. And then again, he had all the pictures, all the documentation. So apartment complexes, why they don't push this when they're dealing with hundreds of tenants, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, there's so many lawsuits that come about and especially in the times that we're in right now where people are going through financial struggles is where people look for anything to get out of paying rent or to get out of what they consider an unnecessary expense so i think that 
right now we should be pushing and they should be pushing to have testing and protocols put in place to protect themselves um, for their own liability, but also for the health and safety of the occupants that's living there too as, as the first priority. So uh, with that being said, I, I did want to turn it over to Sabrina uh, with VERT to talk about testing and maybe you can kind of talk about asbestos testing when that's necessary and required coming from you guys and maybe um, talk about Orange County, San Diego, Riverside County, some of the local areas here as far as uh, what guidelines they need to follow in those areas. Sure. So I whipped up a presentation. Don't judge it because I just put it together this morning. <laughs> um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> I find it really helpful to have a visual. So, so if someone starts talking, sometimes I have to take notes and, and to keep my attention because maybe I have ADD or something. But um, I have this little presentation so you can follow along. So we're gonna talk about commercial residential uh, properties like apartments and the testing that they can get and best practices. So a little background about us, I won't bore you, um, but we do environmental testing. We're a third party company. That's all we do. We don't do any abatement, any construction. We do not do remediation. We solely do testing. So it's really good to have your own testing company in your pocket so that anytime you have a third party, non-related to the contractor, verifying that the work is completed and ready to be um, opened up to the public or to the residents in the, in the building. So we do asbestos, lead, mold, bacteria, air quality testing, moisture match mapping for really large jobs. And um, we're super fast. We have immediate response. We can get same day turnaround time and reports can be done next day. So a lot of times for apartments, you need it done now because the occupants in the building are all frustrated. The longer you're in there with water damage or fire damage or mold, the more upset they get. They start talking to people. Their mom knows a lawyer and now you're you're in this whole big mess just because they want to find a way out like Scott mentioned. So here's a map of some of the areas we cover. We cover Orange County, parts of LA, Riverside, Imperial Valley, and San Diego County. All right, let's get into the meat. So we're going to go over um, testing of asbestos lead mold because that's all I, I think we have time for. Um, but we also do bacteria air quality. We do cleaning verification testing. We can develop cleaning protocols for buildings that um, maybe have hypersensitive um, residents like seniors and you wanna have a protocol written by a third party for a company to follow. And we're gonna go over the regulations in each of these and the best practices for you guys. So asbestos, what is it? Anybody know? It's a naturally, naturally occurring mineral fiber. Woo! <laughs> uh, do you guys happen to know what our state rock is? Yeah, asbestos. Yes, serpentine. Asbestos. <laughs> so it's naturally occurring. There's no reason to freak out when you think you have asbestos in a building. We've been using it in building materials. The only time we need to be concerned about asbestos, do you guys know when? When it's airborne. When it's, when it's, when it's being disturbed. Uh, disturbed, yes. Exactly, so if you disturb it and make it airborne, awesome teamwork. Uh, so, and it's hazardous because it gets into your lungs, it gets into your throat, and we all know about the different kinds of cancer that you can get from asbestos. So when do you need testing? You guys already said it. When, anytime you're gonna disturb a building material that's suspect for asbestos. So really quick, do you guys know some materials that are suspect for asbestos in apartments? Yeah. Vinyl flooring. Yep. Popcorn ceiling. Yep. Drywall. Drywall gen compound? Yes, both. All as well too, isn't it? Stucco. Mm -hmm. Stucco, yes, that's a oh, good. There you go, stucco. I learned that yesterday. 
Um, a good rule of thumb is anything that's not wood, not metal, but you, it can't be painted though. It's gotta be raw metal and glass. General rule of thumb. If you're on a military ship, you'll find glass with, with asbestos sometimes in it, but in residential apartment complexes, if it's not wood, metal, or glass, it's not suspect for asbestos. So that's pretty wild when you think about a building and the building materials that you might need to disturb when you have a flood, a fire, mold damage, or you need to redo some electrical in the building and open up the walls. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with all the regulations, but if you wanna be bored, just reach out to me and I'll send them to you and we can talk about them. <laughs> but um, here's kind of a brief synopsis of some of the regulations regarding asbestos. And the really important ones I think Scott wanted me to touch base on is APCD and AQMD, because those are our local county regulations for asbestos. So APCD is for San Diego County and the rule is 1206. Now that rule is not very clear. It has some loopholes on what buildings need and don't need testing, but for apartment complex, it's very easy. You have to have testing regardless of the age of structure. There's no loopholes. All apartment buildings must have testing prior to any renovations or demolition of suspect materials in that building. AQMD is the regulation for Orange County, LA, Riverside, and their rule is 1403. Their rule is very stringent and it's, what is it, Tommy? Well, it, it depends procedure one versus procedure P5s. Um, and right now, especially, they've really cut back their hours. So even to do a P5 is a big deal right now before we could get the p5 done you know with the day's notification now if we can get a hold of the aqmd you know usually it's now it's like two to three days which can cause a lot of trouble um, yeah the so rule 1403 yeah in orange county la it's very very strict what's the rule for testing do you have to test or do you not have to test anything? i'm gonna defer to sabrina on that <laughs> um <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I have a clear answer on that. Um, I don't know, quite honestly. So AQMD is very black and white. Residential, commercial, single family houses, apartments, HOAs, um, warehouses, any building has to be tested regardless of the age of the structure. No ands, ifs, or buts. They don't mess around. So for San Diego County, we're a little less stringent. There's some buildings that don't have to test, but for apartments, you always have to test per APCD rule 1206 hmm. if you plan to do any renovations. So if you think you have asbestos in the building, you don't have to freak out and get it all tested and get it all removed. It's only when you plan to disturb those building materials. All right. Hey, Sabrina. Yeah. In San Diego, do you know um, what they consider, like how many doors would be considered multifamily? Is it like more than two doors, more than four doors, okay. or what they need to follow for testing? So rule, rule 1206 says any building more than four dwelling units needs testing if it's a condo. If it's an apartment, it's considered commercial and it has to be tested. Great, thank you. Yeah. And then there are loopholes, so I hate to leave it at that. So if there's a building, say, there's two buildings on a property and each building has one dwelling unit within it, that does fall under APCD rule 1206 now. So even though each building doesn't have four units or more than four dwelling units, you, it falls under the regulation now because there's more than one building on the property. So it's very, it's a very hairy regulation. And anytime when in doubt, you can always reach out to us by cell phone, email, we'll always help you out. Um, what we can, you know, put the regulation in there, help you guys understand it. You can call APCD, they're pretty helpful. I know AQMD is not always the nicest I hear, <laughs> um, but APCD, I found that they're, very helpful when you call and try to 
get clarification or if you email them, they'll email you back within about 24 hours. So if you have multiple regulations um, that are different, which regulation do you follow? Anybody know? The most stringent one. Exactly. So whatever the strictest regulation is in the area that you live, that's the one you have to follow. So if you have a federal, a state, a county, and a city regulation, and they all have different rules, you have to follow the most stringent regulation. So always keep that in mind. So what do you do with all this information? It's very overwhelming. Um, you have a couple options. I'm gonna give you all your options. Not all of them are good options. Um, but the first one is just test every time you plan to make any disturbance of a building material, anytime you have to do a renovation, call for testing. What's the negative on that? It can get expensive. So if you have a building that has a lot of toilet backups and supply lines to the refrigerator um, leaking and dish, dishwashers overflowing, it could get expensive to keep calling out a testing company in the event of an emergency and it slows the process down. So the contractor can go on site, evaluate, set equipment, but they have to wait for the results in order to open the building materials. The second option is getting a facility survey completed. So you're ready to go. So we can test drywall joint compound, which is the, the building material that's most disturbed because plumbing pipes and whatnot. And you're ready to go. You have a survey, it says positive or negative, and your contractors can move forward immediately. The only thing you have to do with this is make sure that you're notating the areas that you've renovated prior to that survey, because those areas are not subject to that survey once you remove and replace that material. Um, it's a lot cheaper in the long run. Um, you can move more efficiently uh, and a lot of apartments and commercial properties like this because it allows them the freedom to, to move forward quickly. The last thing you can do, which I don't recommend by any means, is just don't test, risk it, and um, wait for fines and lawsuits to happen. Um, I had to give you all your options. Uh, asbestos abatement, if you find that you do have positive materials for asbestos, hire a DOSH certified contractor like Tommy's company, PW Stevens. They're DOSH certified. You can go onto the DR, DIR website, check them out. They're certified, they're valid, they're ready to go. You wanna make sure that you have that DOSH certified contractor if you have asbestos, positive materials for asbestos. And then what do you do after the abatement? Scott mentioned in his story, you get a clearance or post-test. So you wanna verify by a third-party company that, hey, it's clear, it's safe, you can pull down the containment. If someone create, like, gets a testing company and after the fact, and they say, hey, there's, there's another issue, there's an issue here, everyone's clear. The, the contractor's clear, the property manager had the right contractor because that area that they worked in it was cleared by a third party co um, company. And the other issue may be from possibly the tenants drilling holes or punching holes in the walls. I mean, there's so many crazy stories I'm sure that the apartment managers have on what tenants do in their space that could cause disturbance of asbestos materials as well. So that clearance is so important to check those marks and say, hey, it's clear, it's safe and if you ever get brought into court, everyone's in and out. All right, so lead. Does anyone know the health hazards of lead? I give you a cheat sheet. <laughs> um, it reduces growth of fetus, so you can't see, but you can't really tell, but I'm pregnant. So I don't want lead exposure. <laughs> um, it's really severe health effects for children and it's also bad for adults as well. But we'll keep cruising. Lead regulations. So I just whipped this up and I didn't 
get to review how it's all backwards <laughs> popping up, but Title 17, California Code of Regulations, Division 1, Chapter 8. Um, again, if you need these regulations, you need proof for your building owners, you can just email us and we'll be happy to provide those to you. Uh, for paint, San Diego County's regulations, 1978. For San Diego City, it's 1979. So if you have an apartment building in, say, Chula Vista, what year do you need to test for paint, for lead? 78. So, 78. If you're in downtown San Diego, what year do you need to test for lead paint? 79. Yeah. So it gets tricky with San Diego County because if you're within San Diego City, you have to follow the more stringent regulation, which is 1979. In Orange County, it's 1978. LA, Riverside, 1978. Are there other materials in, in newer construction that are suspect for lead? Yes. Anybody know, like have some examples of what could be suspect for lead? I'll call on Sandra because she should know. That paint? Well, paint, paint, we have the regulation and the date. Right. We don't need to test newer construction for paint. But what about tile in kitchens or bathrooms with that nice gloss? That's the ceramic. So we can import building materials with lead and we can still put them in our new construction. So these regulations are for paint, but don't forget that you could still have other materials in your building suspect for lead. So what do you do? I wanna make it super simple. When you call out for testing, just let your hygienist know, this is our plan renovation. We're gonna demo this whole you know, kitchen um, we're going to remodel the whole bathroom and shower and then let your technician know that you want everything that's suspect for lead tested. So they'll identify, does this need to be tested or not? Cool. So which rule do you follow when you have a, um, the city and the county's re lead regulation for paints different? The more stringent one. The more stringent one. Perfect. So even if it's federal is less stringent than the city, you still have to follow the city over the federal. All right, so best practices for lead testing. You can, it's very similar to asbestos. You can test each time you have to disturb the building. Um, if it's 1978 in San Diego County, LA County, Riverside County, Orange County, for paint, if it's newer construction, you don't have to test the paint unless you're in San Diego City, which is 1979. And then the only other time you test for lead is if there's suspect materials, which you can let your uh, um, industrial hygienist know. Please test if you see anything that's suspect because that's what we're trained to do as property managers. It's gonna be very hard to train yourself, train your eye to be able to identify those things. This is the most expensive way to handle it, um, but it's still a good option. Number two, like asbestos, you can get a, a survey done prior, and that way when you plan to repaint the building or do renovations, um, you're ready to go. And then the, the last one is don't test, which I don't recommend. <laughs> um, and then if it does come back positive for, for lead, please have a DOSH certified contractor like PW Stevens, like Tommy's here to do the abatement of that lead. And then just like asbestos, you wanna get a third party to do the lead clearance after the abatement before the containment's pulled down. Cool, last one, mold. I hope everyone's still awake. <laughs> um, everybody hates this word. It's everywhere. When we do testing, we test outside the home and we test inside the home. Does anyone know why we test outside the home? Control sample. Yeah, because there's mold there. 
there's not, there's definitely mold everywhere you are. So we have to check what are the levels in the area that you live, um, what type of spores are there, and then we we um, compare those to the interior of the building, the areas of concern that you have in your home. So there's always mold around us. You have your windows open during the day. You're going to have mold spores in your home. It's completely normal. The problem is is when you start seeing growth uh, you don't like it's kind of like bugs there's spiders and ants and everything outside and it's fine but when they're in your home it's not that fine because <laughs> then they start creating havoc in your kitchen in your food same with mold it starts creating havoc in your home it starts compromising building materials and it can compromise your health depending on your your sensitivity so if you have asthma you may be a little more apt to feel that there's mold you know when you hear those crazy people like i swear there's mold i feel it and then you're the healthy one saying i don't know i don't i don't think so i think you're crazy um some people are more sensitive it's like some people have allergies and other don't others don't so there's good molds there's bad molds some of the good molds when they get to a certain level it creates a um, allergic reactions in people. So it's just, it just varies. You just don't want it growing in your home. So what are some regulations on mold for property managers? SB 655. If there's a complaint about mold, you must act within 30 days um, and take action. You can't, you can't ignore it. Or you will be su subject to a fine or even one up to one year in jail. So it's, they take it very seriously. So best practices. What do we do when there's mold or microbial growth? When, when we're going and doing an inspection, we don't call things that we see mold because we don't know until the laboratory has identified it as mold. So usually I like to say, is there any growth, any microbial growth? Um, and then it's classified as mold once we test it. So first, if you have a complaint from a tenant, you can get an initial test, a preliminary mold test to identify, is there an issue in the unit? Um, if so, we provide uh, recommendations and we say, this is what needs to be done. And then you can hire an IICRC certified mold specialist to do the remediation work. If you see mold, you, you don't have to get mold testing. You can jump ahead and go ahead and hire a contractor, a mold specialist to do the removal. Um, it's totally up to you and how you want to proceed. But if you don't see there's an issue, then I would recommend a preliminary mold test. You can check that box and say, hey, we took the complaint seriously. We investigated it. There's no issue. If there is an issue, you hire the mold restoration company, they remediate, and then you do a post mold clearance same idea as the asbestos and lead once you pull that containment down if you don't have a third party someone unrelated to the contractor saying it's clear it's safe now you're having to you know try to prove like hey well we did it right here are pictures but mold's not always visible so it's really important to get a mold clearance we take a sample we identify we send it to the lab a third party nationally accredited laboratory and we say, hey, it's clear, it's safe, you're good to go. So sometimes um, I've had a story, a property manager said, we did the mold remediation and we pulled our containment down and they're saying there's still mold, can you come out and test? We went out and tested and there was, there was an issue, but because they didn't have a clearance, they couldn't prove that that mold wasn't caused from mold contamination from the area that they worked in. And if they had a clearance, they could say, we did the work properly. There's another issue in the home. So how do we make this even more simple? Um, make sure you have trusted professionals available. So have a third party environmental testing ready to go, a restoration remediation company, and an abatement company. Um, I do want to make sure that you vet those companies. So make sure they have proper certifications. 
it's it, it's been a good economy so there's a lot of companies that just kind of popped up and when you look into their certifications they don't have them so you want to make sure like tommy's company pw they're on the dir website they're dosh certified they're current their guys are trained they're doing everything right for environmental testing you have a certified asbestos consultant on staff with CSSTs, certified site surveillance technicians, insured. Um, everyone's got their CMI. I can go into details on how to vet another time, but just make sure that you vet your, com your, your companies. And then when you have water damage, you have fire damage, or you have mold damage, just CC all your trusted professionals in that email and then they can together work from there on what needs to be done and provide you the recommendations to move forward with your project. So that way you don't forget to test. You don't forget, you know, the abatement company if they need to get involved, if it comes back positive, everybody's in the loop. You don't have to worry or question, do I need testing, do I not? They'll work together to collaborate and keep you updated via a group email to let you know what the steps they're taking. And that's all I have. I was gonna ask for questions, but we have all the professionals on here, so. I have a question. Okay. Can you send that mold and asbestos requirements in a synopsis, like one single page, it's easy to read to the um, people that are always are trying to say that we don't need to get it done. So mold and asbestos? Mm-hmm. Yes, what I'll do, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll put something together. Do you want me yeah, to send yeah. it to you? Yeah, please. Okay, would you mind uh, sending me? Yeah, I'll, I'll, type it, I'll type it in the chat. Okay. Sabrina, there's another question in the chat area. Did you see that? I'm gonna get out of here. There you go. Uh, Robert so that's a good question legally you don't have to test for mold or do air quality testing if you're gonna do complete demolition of a building uh, but you will need asbestos and you possibly will need lead it just depends if you have the age of the building and what materials are in that building that's a really good question okay. molds are not actually regulated so the recommendations for mold testing and for mold clearances is purely because like Scott said, we're A, in California, and B, we are in a very strange environment where people are getting very tight on money. A lot of people lost their jobs and they may be looking, they may be desperate trying to fulfill their needs, you know, paying their bills and putting food on the table and looking for opportunities to to get money you know that that's what happens when you're put in this situation i think anyone would try to figure out whatever they could do to help serve their family so um, that's why i do recommend mold testing when you don't see anything as a property manager when you don't see growth and the clearance it's not regulated but when you go to court it'll help you get out easily, not waste your time, not waste your resources, and make it smoother. Yeah, thanks Sabrina. Uh, I think really, really good information there. Um, I, I like that you touched on, you know, not classifying it as mold without having that lab, lab, lab data. Um, you know, we always call it suspect microbial growth, uh, essentially. Um, also having a survey done of your property to, to save some costs to be ahead of the game in case you have that emergency you're not waiting out days for testing to be done uh, potentially but also just understanding that you're not just you don't need to be concerned only with the tenant it's really what does the tenant know who is he friends with who is he family members with is he going to get that letter from an attorney later if they, if they know that there was a fire in that building or a major water loss saying, hey, did your property relocate you? Did they do any testing? Did they identify any hazards? Um, because you know, we talked a story before where a, a tenant worked for a restoration company and let a property management company take care of a sewer loss, dried in place, 
let them do it all completely wrong and then sue them because he knew how it should have been done. So those stories happen, it's real. Uh, and that's why you need to protect yourself. Um, also, I'll speak for myself. A lot of times we have the testing companies go direct with uh, the, the management company. We want you to have direct access to questions, concerns uh, with the testing company, and then also just get billed direct uh, to save you some money. So as a restoration company, and most people operate this way that I know of at least, there's zero profit in us asking you to get testing for us. That is 100% our liability protection. It's your liability protection. That is just most restoration companies looking out for your best uh, interest and ours. And again, the health and safety of the occupant. So if you have a, a, a restoration company pushing testing, don't think that they're just trying to make more money because it's really not the case at all. Um, and there's we have countless testimonials as, as to how testing has helped them in the long run. Uh, so, hey, Tommy, can I turn it over to you? I guess a property has asbestos, they have lead. Where does it go from you? Maybe what actions do you guys take, uh, take with further testing or permits or how does that play out for them? You got it. Thanks, Scott. A uh, couple things. First, uh, I wanted to thank you for including me on this uh, Zoom meeting. I, I actually find it very, very interesting to hear all the different sides. Um, my experience, I, I've been in the business about 25 years. I started on the restoration, construction, emergency service side, so I've seen a little bit of everything. I've also had the, the, the pleasure to be part of my own HOA board. I served as president on my board for about nine years. Also very, very involved in the board. Uh, our units were built in the 60s uh, and we have over 250 units. So I constantly see testing trucks, uh, my own company truck and competitors in, in my complex. So um, I've seen all sides. Also being on the board, it's amazing. And even in the last 20 years nowadays, HOA managers, um, people involved still don't understand. So I think this is smart to do that because there are very many times I'll see uh, emergency service contractors in our building it, it, knowing that there's asbestos and, and them not taking this procedure. So this is very important for, for managers to see and understand. Um, secondly, Scott, being in the business as long as I have, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the scenario you explained. You know, testing is so important and it's so economical now. Back in the day, it wasn't, you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was kind of a hit, but now really it is affordable for the HOA manager, uh, for the insurance company uh, to test. It, it's just so very important. And yeah, I've had more people give me high fives or hug me before the social distancing, of course, uh, thanking me for the advice to test. And we do the same thing we don't like to run it through the company. There's no profit in it for us. We'd rather people just do it, you know, th through through a testing company like Vert. Um, it, it, liability wise, it's just so, so very smart. Um, and of course now I'm rambling and I have ADD. So I forgot what your question was. Maybe just taking them through that process of what does it look like when you guys get involved because say the property has asbestos. Uh, what actions do you guys take? What can so, they expect that to look so like? Typically what we do when, we, when we're on a job, the first and foremost thing is I need to see a survey. Um, and a lot of times there aren't surveys provided. You might, you might get a preliminary, but I need to see that survey. Generally, I like to see the survey even before I visit the site so I can see what the lab is actually identifying as hazardous, whether it's mold, uh, what, asbestos or lead. Um, and, and after I do see that survey, then we, then we can sit down with whether it's the property manager or the homeowner and explain exactly what we have to do. Um, it, but until I see that survey or have, a, have an idea from the lab exactly what's going on, I don't even like to talk about it. Um, I, I, I'd be as, I like to be as vague as possible to protect the HOA, to protect the insurance company, and of course the liability of my company um, before we get into it. But once we do know something's positive on a survey, asbestos, uh, you know, or lead, um, you know, then we can sit down and explain exactly what we have to do, um, how we handle it. Uh, now with the, the COVID scare and all the, the crazy things that are going on now, 
our guys actually show up before we walk into anyone's house in our PPE. So our guys are dressing, you know, in the van with their respirators on, with their gloves, which is a little intimidating. We always call first and say, hey, it's your, our guys are going to show up in space suits and, and respirators at the door. But we generally don't enter someone's house now without our PPE uh, for their protection and our protection. Okay, great. Now, when you guys get involved in an asbestos job, is there's clearance testing involved uh, to make sure that that was successful as well, correct? Absolutely. That's another thing we don't do either. Um, strongly suggest you need a clearance, you know, especially with, with mold. On asbestos, a lot of times we'll self-clear and take the samples to the mold. But for a mold job, absolutely. Post, post-testing is just imperative. Uh, when it comes to a procedure five, uh, yeah, nine times or 10 times out of 10, the lab needs to come in and, and certify that it's clean and clear. And what is a procedure five for the uh, apartment managers that will get this later? So Sabrina could probably explain a little bit better than I can, but typically a procedure five is when you walk into a job and you have a disturbance, uh, whether it's been by the homeowner uh, digging into the wall, which happens quite a bit, thinking that they could dry their own unit out or it's it's a collapse just just from the weight of the water um and we find out that there's lead you know uh, i'm sorry asbestos found then uh, the lab will come in and sabrina can explain that explain that procedure five better than i can i'll keep it simple um in aqd territory which is orange county la riverside imperial valley um like he's like tommy said if if the ceiling collapses because the weight of the water and it tests positive for asbestos, the next step is what AQMD requires. It's called a procedure five report. So we have to go do contamination testing and identify other, it depends what the customer wants. In, a, in an apartment situation, you may um, have to get the tenant's insurance involved for the contents, but we'll test the contents to determine what needs to be disposed, what can be remediated um, by, again, a company like Tommy's, PW Stevens, DOSH certified, because it's hazardous materials. And then we'll also test the building. Um, so, you know, are the cap cabinets contaminated? Do they need to be wiped down? Is there carpet? Does that need to be removed and thrown away? Um, we'll do contamination testing. For San Diego County, APCD, a um, they don't require a procedure five report, but we do recommend contamination testing because like Tommy's company, um, they're also in San Diego County. They need a report from a hygienist because asbestos fibers aren't visible to the eye to identify what is contaminated, what needs to be removed so that it may limit their scope and not have to be the whole house cleaned and abated. Um, so. AQMD just regulates it more and requires it. Uh, APCD doesn't require it, but the abatement companies are gonna ask for it to better serve the customer and not exceed the scope of work. Yeah, so thank you for bringing the contents into play because for me, two huge takeaways there. One, you have a ceiling collapse. Let's take that for example. Do not move the tenant into another unit and bring all of their furniture into another unit. We see that so much because you want to find out is there contamination first before you cross contaminate and now you got to do the cleanup of two units find out what you're dealing with you've exposed now again two units you've exposed the workers that are moving uh the contents over um so you, you want to minimize that you don't even want to have entry coming in and out until you identify the hazards and then you know how you need to approach that job do you have to go in wearing respirators because you have hazards there uh, the second takeaway is make your your tenant carry renter's insurance. If you have this issue, the home the homeowners or building owners insurance is not going to cover the tenant's property. And we see many times, especially in a fire damage situation, the tenants have no coverage for their contents. It's highly contaminated, even if it's just smoke odor. So what are you going to do? Are you going to move those contents into another unit, contaminate that unit, or are you going to evict the tenants and maybe that takes 60 days 90 days whatever it's going to be 
that's where renter's insurance would step in and help either replacement cost or cleaning of, of the furniture. And then you, now you have clean furniture or new furniture going into another unit. Uh, that's our that's our biggest hiccup. We deal with so many property management companies and literally come to a screeching halt sometimes for 60 days or more until a tenant is actually evicted or displaced uh, because we can't do anything. We can't go and clean up a structure from a fire and smoke damage when there is contaminated furniture still in there. There's no success for us in odor removal. So it's super, super important that that happens. Um, it also makes yeah. it really easy for the property manager once that tenant makes a claim to put them in temporary housing, apartment, however long it's going to take to clean up the unit. Because um, a lot of tenants, if they don't have insurance, renters insurance will say, you need to put me somewhere. And these situations don't happen because the property manager created them. It could have been the neighboring unit that had a candle and created a fire. So the tenants need to be responsible and think, in this, in, and a lot of them aren't familiar, especially with apartments. It's their first time maybe moving out of the house with their parents. If property managers can require renter's insurance, it helps both the property and the tenant in those situations because a lot of them just don't even know that there's such thing as renter's insurance. Yeah, they, they assume that the building owner's insurance will take care of it if it's not their fault. And we've run into so many issues with major sewer backups with somebody throwing a shoe at a spider on a wall and busted a sprinkler head and flooded out five, six units. Like it happens. People hang their clothes from the sprinkler heads and it's just it's just something that happens and they need to be educated, right? So we're trying to do our job of ed educating the property managers, um, just educate the tenants because it's gonna help you guys and save you a lot of money. Uh, we talked a lot about worker protection and tenant protection, but also you gotta protect your staff. A lot of the maintenance guys are the ones coming in and responding and doing repairs and they don't know either so i mean as an employee of that company you you want to make sure that you're taking every step and precaution to protect them so you don't have the lawsuit coming back on you uh, later for all the exposures so i think we'll probably wrap it up unless anybody wanted to add something i know we went a little bit over and i want to make sure that this is small enough where i can email it out uh, to the management companies i'll but just today, but, yeah thing. Um, the maintenance was a really big um, touch point that you made. Just because there's an emergency doesn't mean that your maintenance staff should go in and open walls for the plumbing. Um, you have to have proper certification. Um, they, have, they have to have training. You have to have proper insurance, liability insurance on your workers. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it, even though the regulation says that in an event of an emergency, you can do this small cut. You still have to have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted. Um, and most maintenance people don't have many of those items. So it's safest to have your maintenance staff stop, call professionals, shut off the water if it's a flood and, and just take it slowly. Cause that way you don't have worker safety, Cal OSHA involved. Um, you don't have contamination lawsuits second I mean it's just way better to just stop the damage call the professionals take take those steps you know adding on to what you're saying Sabrina I think it's super important anything we do in life I tell my kids this all the time communication is so important it, it, when something like that happens it's as easy as calling Sabrina at vert and just saying hey Sabrina you know this is what's going on this is this is the this is what's going on in this unit. What do you think? Nine times out of 10, it's going to be some free advice, you know, and, and sometimes it's not a big deal, but most of the time it probably is, you know, if you have material that's disturbed. So communication is just so very important, no matter what you do in life. Yeah. Understanding the things that you can take care of and the things you can't take care of, right? A sink overflows, it's something fresh. There, there could be something, if you have some equipment, you can take care of that but it's very, very easy to take a very small problem, a little bit of mold in one room, and make that a very expensive problem when you cross-contaminate uh, the whole building or the whole apartment, I guess I should say, and you cross-contaminate that affecting their contents and the other rooms, and then you have health and safety issues as well. So if, if you don't know, ask. There's a lot of people in this room that will help you, that will respond to you, that will educate you uh, on, on what to do and what not to do. 
So there's no really shame in asking for help. I, I know everybody here, I work with everybody here, and they're really the top of the industry and they're always willing to help and lend a hand where they can. So with that being said, uh, Tommy, if you can maybe just throw in the chat uh, your your name, number. Who had a question, Robert? Uh, yeah, I have a quick question. If you, uh, I think uh, it's relevant to your audience, but uh, the cost of the testing is not so much an issue, I think, I but I get these questions a lot. Uh, especially from realtors or property managers that they're in the middle of trying to sell their property. So they're worried that uh, or get this question with mobile that if it becomes the worry that there is some national database where the testing company has to report into it, your property will be forever marked as asbestos or more contaminated and property value will go down. So <laughs> If you can talk uh, around that, that's a misconception that a lot of people have. About IT. So. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you my standpoint, and Sabrina could probably chime in too. But uh, you have an issue, a, a water damage, a fire damage, or whatever. Your property is going to be severely more impacted without any clearance to show that it is safe. We run into that with these uh, these THC these grow houses, right? Where it's it's going to be the city's involved in it already. It's got it's got its marking, and people don't want to do any clearance testing. It's like, well, how do you sell that? How do you rent it back out again without anything that says from a third party, hey, this we've gone through it and it's completely safe. There's no risk. So to me, I think I think it's going to be definitely more at risk. Uh, or or the value will be impacted more to not have that clearance. Absolutely. So, but you're probably talking about something minor, right? Where it's not no, going it, through it insurance? It's been a case where there is an issue, but they haven't tested yet. So they don't know if there is asbestos or mold. So they say, oh, if we test, then if there is asbestos, then we're in trouble. Otherwise, we just see no evil if you're no evil, right? So just get it done. <laughs> So are you saying that demo was done before testing or, or no demo has been before, done? Before any demo or any work is being done, right? Yeah. We always recommend testing before, uh, but they're, they're worried that if we test, you're kind of gambling, right? So if it's negative, then we're good to go. But if it's positive, then uh, you know, there's some big things that entails, you know, so they might just say, oh, better not test it than just do it. Sure. Well, I mean, asbestos is only harmful when it's being disturbed, right? So, and again, you, you find asbestos with over-the-counter products today, right? It's in adhesives. Um, we, we've talked about different materials that you'll find it in. So for me, I don't think that that's going to be, I'd almost rather have my property tested before I have to pay for it. If I bought the property, I'm like, hey, cool, I know what I'm dealing with. Um, then have to have then something happen and now I got to eat the, the fee of, of testing and know what I'm dealing with. So. I, I don't know. I'm not a realtor. I haven't been on that side of things. Um, I guess being in the industry, we're just more well aware of, for me, it's it's not a concern if my building has asbestos or not, if I'm not cutting into it or disturbing it. But it, does anybody else want to chime in on that? I tried to sell my condo uh, a couple of years ago when my husband and I were moving in together. Um, and I told the realtor, I said, hey, my property's been tested. It was built in 1990. There's no asbestos in the unit, so if they plan to do any renovations, there's less cost to it. Because in I live in Ocean Beach, and most buildings are very old. It it didn't help anything. Like <laughs> people didn't care. Um, so I don't. From my experience, I haven't seen it devalue a home if you do have asbestos testing. Um, what I think it does is it shows as a homeowner that you were smart, you were proactive. Uh, versus if a homeowner has no information about their house, I would be a little bit more skeptical. Like, okay, it's 1990 and you have zero information. You're, you're saying there's never been any renovations. There's never been a leak. I would think they're lying, you know? So I would rather, like Scott says, have clearance testing, have the, the initial testing showing that they were proactive when they had issues. Every home has things happen. It's just life. If the seller didn't die, it must be safe, Robert. <laughs> Maybe people just don't want to test because they don't want to know what they've been living in for for the last few years. I don't I don't know, but I think it just it's an education topic, right? You yeah. know, that's what that's when you have the opportunity to talk to them about. Well, if your property has asbestos, well, here's the concern. Really, the concern is when you're disturbing it. If you're not disturbing it, it's fine. It gives them that peace of mind. But understanding sometimes just 
knowing that you're not willing to do that job without testing lets them know the severity of it. Uh, and, and sometimes that's just enough to get them to, to understand and move forward. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I don't know how it's going to affect values. I, I can't imagine it affect anything, um, only yeah. helping it by having those results. Yeah. And as far as I know, uh, as a testing company, if you found mold or asbestos, there is no national database that you're supposed to report to marking this house forever, right? So it's just you're, you're as a seller, I'm sure you have to disclose it, but it's not like something that all people can search that they know that this house is Right. So when we're hired, we're hired by whomever's hiring us. Could be a tenant, could be a homeowner, and we provide those results to the paying customer, and that's it. That's right. but they don't go anywhere else. So even if Tommy said, "Hey, I want Robert's results," we would have to get your approval before we sent it to Tommy. Right. And there's been many times I've called, you know, tried to get results from a lab, and they're like, "Sorry." Yeah, you didn't pay for it. It's only for the client. Does that help, Robert? It looks like you're still thinking. I think he's, he's frozen. Fro he's frozen. I think he's just taking it all in. All right. Well, <laughs> if anybody doesn't have uh, any other questions, then I think we'll wrap up this video. Thank you all for your. Uh, feedback and participation in it and uh, I'll get this off if you guys want a copy of it just reach out to me let me know and we'll send you a copy as well fantastic everyone have a great day thank you, too. you. Bye. nice to meet you all thank you nice to meet you, you. bye